Thank you very much for being here. So let's start with three languages for the Elven full stack developers under the sky, seven for the dwarf backend developers in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal front end developers doomed to die. The languages are doomed to die, not the developers, okay? One for the compiler lord on his AST throne in the land of bytecodes where the programs lie. One BM to rule them all. One BM to find them. One BM to bring them all and in bytecodes bind them in the land of bytecodes where the programs lie. I can hear the epic drums rolling. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> so let's start then quickly. First, I would like to publicly express gratitude to uh, Chris Seaton because part of the materials I'm going to use here, part of the examples I'm going to use came from a talk uh, and, a, and a workshop actually he did in Oracle Code 1 2018 and he thankfully was allowed with us to reuse them to spread uh, a bit more of what's Graal VM. All these examples can be found in GitHub in my account so feel free to get them, practice with them, experiment and if you have any ideas that I want to share, pull request are welcome. So, in a nutshell, who knows what is Graal VM? Who is already familiar with it? Raise the hands. Only a few of them. Who has heard about Quarkus or Micronaut? More or less the same. The subatomic, supersonic Java. Well, What's having common frameworks like Micronauts or Quarkus is that they are relying on Graal VM under the hoods to be able to deliver new generation of backend services that are faster and leaner than ever. This is not the slow Java that we were used to know. It's complete new work. So the, the project came from Oracle Labs, like a brand new uh, 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 endeavor to try to approach the compiler differently in Java. They have one problem, is that the compiler after all these years is C++ code, is very optimized, and it reaches a point in which adding new optimizations were nearly impossible. And the steep learning curve of C++ and the internal framework was very important. So they decided, let's start from scratch. Let's apply everything we know and do something new and better. They did it in Java, which is funny. So they write the Java compiler in Java and we're able, and we will see more later, to start delivering better performance with that new compiler. There are two flavors. There is an open source version, the Community Edition. It's free for use for everyone, even in production. And there is also an Enterprise Edition with further enhancements. So I'm going to use Community Edition. Uh, everything that you see here, you can start using uh, right now. This is the high-level uh, internal architecture of Graal VM. I'm not going to go into the detail, but I just wanted you to get one important thing here. The gray boxes is the heart of the JDK, the heart of the JVM. The hotspot virtual machine and the JVM compiler interface, which is able to connect with external components and do all the optimizations in the runtime. And then it's when Graal sits on top of that. We have a new compiler and a new set of companion frameworks which are going to give us all the polyglot capabilities of the framework. We are going to see more of that later. The agenda is pretty full, but today we only have roughly 30 minutes. So I'm going to focus on the most important things. But if we just go up to the point number three, I will be happy because those three are the really more important and that's why they are in the beginning. But the presentation I'm going to share and all the materials have all the examples, so you can experiment with them, even if today we cannot cover them all. So let's start from the beginning. Graal, or more specifically Graal VM as a new software package, can be just used as a drop-in replacement to the JDK. There is nothing new to learn. Just get Graal VM and use it where you were using Java or the Java development kit before. You have the same commands, the same familiar command line arguments, all the compatibility. The VM is the same, the compiler interface is the same. You only have new components there to make your life different, easier, more powerful. 
Of course, there are also some specific uh, uh, commands for doing new things. We will see some of them. An important thing to note is that GraalVM, the downloadable package, is still at Java 8. Okay, 11 is in the works, but it's still at Java 8. So as I said before, GraalVM has multiple components of all those orange boxes, but the most important one is the Graal compiler. This is really when all the new things and all the new innovations come in. So you know what is the role of that compiler? Many people think that this is Java C command, but this is not the case. Java C takes Java code and converts it into byte codes. The same that you have a compiler for Kotlin, a compiler for Scala. They all have something in common. They produce byte codes. But the real magic inside the JVM is that on runtime, you take those byte codes, explore your machine and what are you doing and what are the resources that you have available and apply optimizations at the moment. Optimizations that are being improved with time. That's the usual thing we see, you know, the, the, the Java virtual machine takes some time to start, but then it starts to behave better, it performs better. So that compiler, which takes byte codes and optimizes them, is really the core of, the core of Graal. It's what makes Graal really performing better. Better memory footprints, better performance in many cases. I like this picture. It's come from Chris Tallingers from Twitter from the Joker 2017 conference, where they publicly spoke where were the performance improvements they were seeing after introducing Graal compiler in some of their production services. An 11% improvement in CPU benchmark when you are running a big a farm of servers is really a lot of money. So even small improvements in performance like a 3% or 5% can really make a difference. So let's start playing with Graal, okay? Okay, so you can see. How can you see the, the, the screen there from the back? Is okay? Yeah? Okay, so right now I have here a console. I have already Graal VM installed, so you don't need to wait. If I just click on the typical well-known Java dash version command, I can see that this Graal VM, which I have installed, and is going to be uh, running my programs. Okay. So let's start. It's a very simple program that is just taking as a text file and it's counting the words. And it's going to just print the 10 words that has uh, more appearances in that file. So if I just show you the, the file, you can see that there is a very simple Java program reading a file using the stream API. Similar. No, no, nothing that we are not used to, to see, okay? Counting the words, etc., etc. So now let's execute, sorry, uh, let's compile the program and execute it with a small file, very small file. Okay, so it took 0 0.156 to execute. It's very small, you can see one word, two words, it's a very small file. Let's see what happens if I do the same with a bigger file, okay? So in this case, I'm going to use Alice in, Wonderl in Wonderland book, which is a book, but it's a small book. It takes 0 0.2. This means that it takes longer, but it's not linear. The longer the file, the longer the time, but you can see that it's not the double or the tenth as you will expect because of the size of the file. So some optimization has started to be applied in there. Now let's try with a bigger book. One and piece. It's a big book. So as expected, it takes more time, 0 0.7. But again, it's not the linear proportion of the size of the file. So we can see that, we are used to that, the JVM is doing this kind of optimization for us, which is great. But now you don't have any context. I'm cheating a bit. This is GraalVM, but it is really bet better or not than the regular JDK. So let's do that. I am going to disable the Graal compiler in GraalVM, which is something that you can do. So let's disable and re-execute 
with uh, one piece. So we can see that there is a small uh, performance improvement, but this is really very simple program that is running for very, very short period of time. And this is probably even not meaningless because it's, this is a box, it's a developer PC, it, does, it, it is doing a lot of things. So probably this is just the moment in which I am running, the, the CPU is more loaded. We need to do something that really stress the JVM a bit more. So that's what I'm going to do now. So this other example is a bit, a bit more elaborate. It's a test of value types. So we have a matrix of complex numbers and we are going to multiply these matrices. And then we are used to going to use the JMH uh, uh, performance uh, benchmarking uh, framework to iterate that operations a lot of time and get insightful uh, uh, meaning of, of what's happening, okay? So let's package the, the project. And let's execute this with Graal activated. So first it's going to do the warm-up iterations. It's going to take some time just to ensure that we are applying enough optimizations in the JVM to take meaningful results of this benchmarking. But we can see that, well, more or less, after a few seconds, we start to see like the plateau of productivity. So we have roughly 2.5 milliseconds. This is microseconds with a new, but it's microseconds, okay? So it's 2.5 milliseconds per operation, which is quite nice, 2.5. Let's wait for, uh, for the ends, 2.4, 2.5. Just remember the, the number, okay? This is the, the performance we are seeing with Ruralvia. Now I'm going to disable the Graal compiler and I'm going to execute the same program. We disable the compiler and from the very beginning you are starting to see the difference. From the 2.5 roughly that we were gaining with Graal VM and the Graal compiler, now we are about 8. Then the C1, C2 compiler, so the regular compiler is still, you know, catch up a bit, and you can get 6.3, 6.4. So you can see that we are gaining three times the performance just by switching to the Graal compiler. So the, the longer the program runs, the more computational logic that you put in the program, more optimizations the new compiler will do, and more uh, performance uh, uh, gains are you going to see, okay? You can see regular Java programs just replace one for the other. So it's easy to start experimenting with it and see for your specific services and specific programs, you can also get these good performance optimizations. Okay? It's true that this is good for long running programs. The more the program runs, the more optimization we have. What about short running programs? We will see that later, okay? So, what if I told you that the JDK that you're using today, if it is 11 or newer, already has the Graal compiler inside it? Did anyone know? No? But, but it's there. It's not enabled by default and it's not the latest version. But there is recent one and is going to be updated as new version of Java uh, are coming out. So this means that you even can, uh, uh, don't need to download anything to start experimenting with RAL. Just take your JDK and activate it. So let's see how this is done, okay? It's very simple. So let's go back to the top 10 example, the one that is counting words in a file. So you can see in the shell that I'm now working with Java 13, the latest one, no? So Java dash version. This is the regular OpenJDK, the latest one. So remember how much time do we need it to count the words in one piece? I, I don't remember, so I'm going to execute again. Okay, 0 0.9, 1 point, roughly that. Now let's activate uh, let's activate the RAL compiler in the uh, OpenJDK. We execute it, and we are not seeing the expected 
uh, performance of uh, games. So as I said before, this is not the latest version, and probably this is not the, the best example. But how about the one with the complex co multiplications, which is really big computational logic? Will we see these performance optimizations in this other example? Well, let's see. So again, uh, do you remember the time that we needed? that? I don't. So I'm going to run it again. So this is JDK 13, 7.2, now I remember, 6.7, 6.6, okay, that's, that's approximately the figure. We can stop this. So now, let's execute the same, enabling the, the GRAAL, I, I know this can be confusing sometimes, enabling the GRAAL compiler inside the OpenJDK. It's not the latest version. You can see that it's not as good as previously, just directly with the Graal VM. But there are, as you can see them, there are performance optimizations just by switching on the Graal compiler in, in JDK. So this means that you can go back to your works, to your home projects, wherever you are, and if you are already working on Java 11 or, 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 or Gritter, you can start enabling that just with these few switches and start experimenting and getting the value of this performance optimization for you, okay? This is already considered production ready, okay? So if you are not using, you are losing the opportunity. Really, really, for most of the programs we do, long running services, etc., you can see these kind of improvements. Maybe not so extreme because this is just a lot of computational mathematics operations, but regularly you, you can easily see 5%, 10% performance improvements. Okay. So is it cool? Do you like it? Yeah? Now, this is going to be cool. Believe me. What if I told you that besides this fantastic just-in-time compiler, Graal also comes with an ahead of time compiler. Who knows which is ahead of time? The traditional compilation. I take my program and I create a native program, an executable, not by code, nothing inter intermediate, nothing interpreted. It is a native program. We can do that with Graal. And as you can imagine, this is going to enable a lot of performance optimization in a startup time. The ahead of time compiler is going to take decisions on how to run the program. Of course, it will not be able to adapt later. But this means that for short, uh, uh, short running programs, CLIs, serverless functions, it's going to be incredibly fast. Okay, believe me. We are going to see that. Ahead of time I still have some caveats, okay? Uh, reflection works but you need to provide extra configuration. Uh, dynamic proxies work. You also need to provide uh, uh, extra configuration. Dynamic invoke is, or the invoke dynamic, sorry, it still does not work except for lambdas, which is logical. I mean, you have a program which is statically compiled. I cannot get some Groovy code and be executed that because this is a native image. So there are still some limitations, but truly for most of the things that we do, we are not going to hit those limitations. And that's why frameworks like Micronaut or Quarkus are really demonstrating that you can do all these things at a scale and they are production ready. So native image is not installed by default in Graal VM. You need to download and install like a, a plugin, but it's just one simple command. This simple command will install that component that you can see there, the blue box, substrate VM. So that specific component is the ahead of time compiler, okay? So let's play a bit with this. Remember the top 10 program? Yeah? Not so long ago. But I don't remember how many time to, did it take. So I'm going to execute it again. Okay, so type Java top 10. Okay, so 0 0.147 for the small file. Well, it's great, but let's see if we can make it run faster. Okay, so let's generate the native image for the top 10 class. First time I see this error, so 
That's what happens when you are doing live demos. Nothing to see, move along. Okay, so now the head of time compiler is taking that Java program, is executing it internally, is discovering all the different paths it has, applying optimizations, and creating the native image. It takes some time, this ahead of time compilation, but in exchange, what we're going to get is a faster program. Let's see. An important thing I want to show you before. The executable program don't have any dependency with the JDK. You can see there, only system libraries, self-contained, and the size is amazing, 7.8 megabytes. That's everything we need for that program. So lambdas, processing, reading files, writing files, processing the error, uh, error handling, all the things that we need in 7.8 megabytes. Let's execute it, but before we do that, I want to run a small poll. Who thinks we are going to see any optimization because this is a very simple program and I'm cheating you? And then I have the, the good example. <laughs> you are very confident, probably I'm cheating you. <laughs> no? Okay. Who thinks we are going to say roughly the same? Okay, a few hands. Who thinks it's going to take less than one tenth of a second? Who thinks is going to be less than one hundredth of a second? Zero point zero zero eight, which is incredibly fast. And this is no coincidence. I can execute it many time, and I can see that this is very consistent. So imagine. So we have this program. It's not big. It takes some times, but even with these cases, we start to see a lot of optimizations. It's incredible, at least for me, you know, coming from the old Java days, having a Java program running in less than one hundredth of a second is incredible. Imagine when you can see a microservice uh, starting to receive a REST a request in less than one tenth of a second. It's like boom. <laughs> Okay, but I told you that there are limitations. So let's explore those, of the, those limitations a bit, okay? So we have time, so let's explore the limitations because then it's important to, for you to see that this is not a toy. This is serious stuff. And that's why these frameworks are using it so good. So I have prepared here a different example. It's an example that is going to use uh, reflection. So I'm going to compile the program. Let me show you the, the code of it, okay? Okay, so you can see well that, I think so. It's okay? Yeah? No complaints, okay. Well, very simple program, two classes. The class bar always prints, always is bar. The class foo is a bit more elaborate. It will look at the current time milliseconds, and depending if it is even or odd, it will say sometimes it's foo, sometimes it's bar. Okay? So we are applying some randomizing because we cannot predict how the current time millis is going to, to run. And then we have the reflection class, which is going to take those two classes, is they it's going to dynamically load those classes with reflection. And then it's going to spawn a couple of threads to run each of those classes, the print method, just uh, after uh, 100 milliseconds for 10 times. So pretty random. Let's do that. So if I uh, execute this program, I can see that as expected, I get always is bar and sometimes foo, sometimes bar. Okay, not predictable because the timing is not perfect. This is not uh, a real-time uh, uh, processor. So you see that this is not predictable. So let's now create the native image. No, for top 10, no. I need to pass the class path, and I need the other example. Ba -bam -bam -bam. So again, it's going to take the program, execute the paths. It has reflection, but the good thing is that we are passing the class names as a parameter. 
So the compiler knows exactly which classes need to inject into the native image, and it generates the native image perfectly. And I can uh, see that the program runs very well. So let's execute it. Exactly the same, it's a native image. We don't see the, the improvements here because you have the, 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 the slip in the threads, but the program is running as a native program perfectly. And we can see that the size of the program is 2.3 megabytes. It does not need a lot of the funny things that we add in the others, like reading files and writing files and a stream processing and all those things. It's much more compact. It's very optimized. Only the things, the instructions that you need to run your program are here, 2.3 megabytes. So that's great. But I cheated a bit. I tell the compiler all the information. So let's try a different example, a bit more elaborate, which is also closer to what any framework will do in the real world, no? We will have kind of a configuration properties. In this configuration properties, I'm going to have some properties that is going to give me which classes I want to load. So in this case, I have foo class property and foo bar, uh, and bar class property. The rest of the program is the same. So if I now, well, if I execute the, the, the program, you can imagine that it's going to give us exactly the same behavior because we are just changing the way we are telling the program which classes to run, the rest is the same. But if I now try to generate that native image, let's see what happens. It starts, compiles, analyzes, blah, blah, boom, 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 ping, pong. There's going to be a moment in which the head of time compiler says, oops, I don't know how to continue. You are not giving me all the information I need to do the job. So it starts to do what is called a fallback image, which is very interesting. It's going to have a native program that do everything that does, doesn't need the JDK, but it still needs the JDK for running all the dynamic stuff. So in this case, it's pretty useless because I still need the JDK and I still need to work with the JDK for the dynamic part, which is almost all the program. But the good thing is that I can feed the ahead of time compiler the information it needs. What are the dynamic proxies? Which configuration properties are you reading? What are the reflection operations that you are going to do? This can be a bit cumbersome. You need to pass a lot of information. The good thing is that the Graal people has created an agent that you can use for running your program and will collect all the information for you, which is great because you just, uh, and actually all these frameworks do that. So in the, in the build pipeline, they use the agent to collect information and create the native image. We are going to see that. So uh, again, we are uh, here with the, with the program and I'm going to execute it with the agent activated, which is going to write the outputs to the target slash native image directory. So I execute the program and if I now see this directory, I have this beautiful JSON files, which is telling the compiler later which JNA interfaces are you calling, which proxy, dynamic proxy you have, which reflection operations are you doing, which resources are you accessing. And if I now uh, uh, type the reflection, for example, I see that you're going to use bar class, the constructor, and the print bar method, and foo class, the constructor, and the print for bar method. I can do this manually, but it's nonsense. Let's the agent do that work for us. And now, of course, I can run the native program pacing this information as parameters. So this time, the head of time compiler, compiler has all the information it needs, and it's going to produce the native image completely isolated from the JDK that we need and we can execute it, working as we expect and with a size of file, which is very compact. It's a bit bigger because you have all the logic for the files and, 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 the, co and the configuration information is there, but it's really, really fast. So it's cool. Native images, do you like them? Okay, so as you can imagine that this is like the obvious 
thing to happen next. If we have a small executable images for our Java programs that runs very fast, I need, I need to put them in a Docker container. For no reason that it's cool to have them in a Docker container, okay? This minimal, these images are going to have minimal dependency with the system and no dependencies with the JDK itself. They, so they are going to be very, very, very slim. So let's build the Docker images, but before we need to do something because the image I've created is a native image for my Mac. It's not going to play inside a container with Linux. So we need to build the Linux native image. And to, play and to build the native Linux image, and in, in general for portability, what we're going to do is a Docker image with RAL inside and use it to build the executable. This is going to be really fast. Okay, so uh, the same shell. Okay, so first I have uh, this uh, image created. It's very simple, I, I want to show you. So from the base image that we have for Graal, I'm just installing the native image. That's the only thing we need. And the entry point for the image is native image command. So now, oh well, I, I, you can see that uh, I have here generated the image, 1.8 gigabytes. But this is not the runnable image. This is just for producing the executable image. So now let's do docker run. Okay, I'm going to mount my local folder, uh, there we go. So now we are going to repeat the native image command, passing all the information that the, that the head of time compiler needs to the image, and we are going to have a Linux native, native executable. So it's going to take around 20 seconds, the full process is about to finish. A bit more than 20, well, 21. What happens if I now try to execute that image? It is not working. This is not a Mac executable. It's a Linux executable. But now I can make it part of, a, of, a, of my Docker image, my actual program, which is the simplest of all the Docker files. From Alpine, which is the slimmest, the, really minimal, minimal Linux distribution we need, copy the executable, make it executable, and run it, just like that. So let's build that image with the executable that we have now created. It's really fast, and then run. Uh, the image, as we expected, is running perfectly fine as a native image inside my Docker container with Java, reflections, config files, you name it. Whatever you need is there. And the image is, no, not this one, is 14 megabytes only, which is really, really cool. And at the end, and coming to closure, this is what is really uh, making all this faster, linear Java movement, something of this importance. Because when we take this, not, not to these toy programs, but to real programs, real services that we are doing, and real frameworks that we use, it's really a game changer, again. Milliseconds for running a program, megabytes to count the size of an image, and frameworks like Micronaut and Quarkus, there has been a Quarkus talk before, so if you have not been there, uh, wait for the recording. So Micronaut, Quarkus, Spring is almost there. So in the 5.2 release, it's already providing support for native images. Not everything works, but many things already work. So Spring is also almost there. And of course, everything serverless. If we need something to work fast, return fast, Sometimes we've been forced to choose another languages because we needed that extra speed and the JVM was not good for that. But now we can also use the JVM, which means pick the languages that is best for your job, what the team knows, what the team likes. There is no limitations like we were used to, like we cannot use Java for this because it's too slow. Now that is no longer an excuse uh, to stop uh, choosing Java. Okay. 
We are out of time, so if there are any questions. How can we read them? M my site is not as good as it should be. <laughs> there you go, we'll put it on the big screen. Okay, perfect. We'll put it on the big screen, Let's if see. possible. Move blue to this day. Ah, yeah. perfect. <laughs> you have it. Nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, how portable are the compiler binaries between systems? They are not portable. They are native images. <laughs> I, and, and I precisely do that exercise because this is not no, no longer a write once, run everywhere program. It's a native image. So you need to compile every time for the different system. Windows, Mac, Linux, when, when you need it, okay? So what is the difference in the optimization between different platform or architecture? Uh, I don't know, okay? Of course, the benchmark may be different, but at least from what I've been able to see in Linux and Macs, uh, and Macs, really the main difference is not in the system itself, it's more on the program side. So probably there are differences, but if they are, probably they are not noticeable, at least not to me. But of course, the type of program is where you are going to see no optimization, small optimizations, or a lot of optimizations, okay? Will a Spring Boot REST API work? Yes. In fact, Quarkus uh, has one of the main uh, startup uh, examples is with, uh, with REST. There is a boot plugin, so you can start playing with that. Also, JPA works perfectly. Ibernate works great. And also Spring Framework and Spring Boot, are uh, sorry, Spring Framework 5.2 start also to support uh, that, okay? Okay, so how is memory management done in RAL? This is done the very same way because we are not changing the hotspot VM. Remember that gray box? This is unchanged. What we are changing is the ability to take the bytecodes and optimize them and feed them into the virtual machine. But then once they are in the virtual machine, no matter which language they came from, they are just bytecodes. Nothing changes in that, in that case, okay? So have you tried this in production as part of the build pipeline? I personally and my teams, not yet in production. We are experimenting with them, playing with them in non-production system, and it looks really good, okay? So probably in the short future, we will start to have that in, in production uh, too. Do aspects work with Graal, also in runtime weaving? Uh, yes. Okay, I don't know all the details, but they work with the Spring. So they work with Spring, they, they work. At the end, with aspect, what you are going to do is kind of injecting some code or dynamic proxies. So most of the time it works. As I mentioned before, especially for a Spring, which relies heavily on aspects, not everything works yet. But many things from that we are used to doing in the Spring framework are already working. Is there a case where you would not recommend to use Graal VM? if you are a fearful person. I mean, if you are really <laughs> scary of trying new things, because, I mean, it's already in the JDK. Start playing with it in non-production, in your test environment, and see how it works, even in your developer machine. So there is no really reason to, uh, to say, this is not going to work. It's working for many people, and, and there are people that are gaining a lot of benefits from that in production, okay? But of course, if you are scary of new things, well, but you will probably not be here, so I'm sure that's not the case, okay? So how is memory management done in native images? No memory management. I mean, it's like a C program, so you open, use that, free up, so there is no garbage collection and all these kind of things. So you have a, a string, the moment it gets out of a scope, it's freed up, like if you done a malloc, and uh, then they allocate the memory. But there is no kind of memory management that we are used to do in a virtual machine, okay? No garbage collection and all these kind of things. They, they are not there. So who is backing the development of Graal? This is mainly Oracle from Oracle Labs, but as happens with many open source projects, the moment that they start to get mainstream and many people start using them, they start to be also a community effort. Because you can imagine Red Hat, the Micronaut people, all these people have started to rely on Graal. So at that moment, it really stopped to belong to just one company, but too many that are, are looking at that, but it's most of the, uh, of the effort part of the, the Oracle Labs, okay? Does TensorFlow run on Graal Python? As far as I know, uh, no, okay? Python is uh, still very experimental, and uh, typically only the most simple programs are going to run. But this is changing every week. So this is as far as I know, okay? But you will probably check again. Okay? All right. No more questions? Yeah.
That was, oh, what, there you go. Ah. <laughs> How does it work with mocking frameworks? Mm, I don't understand the use case. I mean, you use mocking frameworks to run your unit test. You, you don't need your unit test to, I mean, I, 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 I assume that you are speaking about native images. You're not going to use native images during unit testing. This is like kind of your build process. So in that sense, I mean, in theory, you could do that, but why? Why do you need to use your unit test or run your unit test as a native image? Probably does not make sense, okay? But it will depend uh, of not solely on the type of mocking framework, but in uh, what are the things that you are doing. So if you are using just easy mock and simple things, this is just normal stuff. So, but if you need a, a, a instrumentation, by code instrumentation, for, so for example, for mocking a constructor or for mocking a static block, that is not going to work because there is no dynamic uh, bytecode generation possible with the native image. But as I said before, I probably it does not make sense to run your unit test with the, with the native image, okay? Does Spring Data work with Graal? Uh, I am not 100% sure. I think yes, as part of uh, a Spring J with JP and Ibernate, but I am not completely sure. I will need to, to double check on that, okay? And okay, now? I think it's the okay. last one we still have time so not rushing it no no no, no. Okay, that's it <laughs> thank you very yeah, much thank you very much thank you, thank you.